I know a lot of you are thinking, and this is Mr. Kelly's last video. Hallelujah. You will not see him teach anymore on the screen. No more electronic pen, any of that. But I tell you what, it could get worse. In fact, Mr. Brust is coming up in Unit 12. I feel for you. All right, so what are we going to learn about today? Operations with square roots. In other words, adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing square roots. You can only add and subtract. We're going to start with add and subtract, of course, as we all do. But you can only add and subtract if they're exactly the same underneath the radical. And then it's just combining like terms. Let's go back to something we all know how to do. How about like, we've combined like terms before, 2x plus 3x. We all know that. You just add the numbers in front, the coefficients. That's 5x. What about 2x plus 3y? We say, hey, wait, hold on, they're different. We can't add them together, so that's just 2x plus 3y. We can't do it. It's the same thing with radicals. The only added little, you know, hiccup here is that they might give you like a radical 48, which you must simplify first. But guess what? When you simplify it, it should, or it might, I should probably say might, uh, end up being a like radical, meaning it's it's also a radical 3 in this case, a number 2. But let's do some problems, and uh, we'll see what we're talking about here. So number 1, 3 radical 7 plus 2 radical 7. That is very similar to 3x plus 2x, where x is radical 7. What would we do here? We would just add the coefficients. That would be, okay, in the top, that would be 5x. Uh, in number 1, we would get 5 radical 7. Done! Are you serious? I am Billy Ray serious. That is serious. All right, how about number two? Well, we have radical three and radical 48. That 48, though, I can simplify. Use your number line, remember? So we start, you know, zero, one, they're kind of worthless, but four, nine, 16, keep it going, 25, 36, what's next, 49, all right, so 49's next. 48's in here, so we check, no, no, not a factor. Yes, a factor, 16 times three. Oh my goodness, look at that. Radical 3 and radical 3. So it's going to be, I'm going to put a 1 here, because remember that's imaginary? 1 radical 3 minus 4 radical 3. It's the same as 1x minus 4x. What would that be? Well, if we had x's, we'd make that a negative 3x. If we have radicals, guess what? Negative 3 radical, what do we have underneath? 3. And we're done with that one. Let's keep it going. How about number 3? We have a radical 2 and a radical 2. Those two can be combined. The radical 3 is different, though. We cannot combine it. So I'm going to put my imaginary 1 there. So it's 4 radical 2 minus 1 radical 2. That's going to be 3 radical 2. And then this radical 3 has got to hang out. Doesn't combine. Just like, uh, where was it? Oh, I had the x and the y. Where'd that go? I guess I got rid of it. There you go. 3 radical 2 plus radical 3. How about number four? All right, so 90. I use, I'm going to keep going on this thing. I'm going to use my perfect square list here. And what do you got? 81, 64, 81, and 100. So 90 is right here. Check, 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 check. None of these go in until you get to 9. Why does that happen every time my connection's lost? So we get 90 is 9 times 10, or radical 9 times radical 10, minus 10. 40. Now, you don't use 5 and 8 because neither of them are on this perfect square list. Remember, I ask you very nicely to write this list out. Okay, but 40 is 4 times 10. So we get radical 4 times radical 10. So look, we're going to have common radical 10s here. We're going to get 3 radical 10 minus 2 radical 10. All of that equals 1 radical 10. I should just write radical 10 here. That's all we have to do. There are the first four. Let's continue. All right, there's some music for you there. Okay, so multiplying and dividing now. Ooh, so to multiply, you basically, I'm going to boil it down, real simple. Coefficients with coefficients, radicals with radicals, that's as simple as it gets. So that's how multiplying and dividing works. So let's simplify number five for us. Two times negative four, that's the, those both are coefficients. So two times negative four is negative eight. And then the square root of two times the square root of six is the square root of 12. Now, problem. Are we done? No. You have to simplify you have to check to see if you can simplify the square root of 12. So, remember the number line? All right, so the number line was 2 will give you 4, 3 will give you 9. Uh, what do we have? 4 will give you 16 and 12 is right here. We check uh, that can be written as a square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Right? 
And then we have that negative 8 out front. So we have negative 8, square root of 4 is just 2. So it's times 2 radical 3. And as I said, coefficients with coefficients. So the final simplified answer here is negative 16 radical 3. You multiply those two together. All right, so coefficients with coefficients, radicals with radicals. And that'll help you simplify. Uh, negative 16 radical 3 will be the simplified answer for number 5. Let's try 6. This is a distributive property. So you got to go 1, you got to go 2. All right, so from the first multiplication, we have 4 times 3, which is 12. And then radical 7 times radical 2, that's radical 14. All right, so that's from the first swoop. The second multiplication, we have, this is a coefficient right here, negative 2. So we have 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then radical 7 times, there's nothing. All right, so we're just going to put radical 7. I mean, technically, there's a radical 1 there. Uh, but we don't need to write that because that would be 2 times 1. So for the second multiplication, we get 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And the radical 7 hangs out. And so we're left with, right now, 12 radical 14 minus 8 radical 7. So check, does radical 14 simplify? You check the number line, no it does not. Does radical 7? No, 7 is prime. So this is our final answer because nothing will sim the radicals don't simplify. Can you, mul can you subtract the 12 and the 8? No, because they're attached to each radical. It's 12 radical 14 and 8 radical 7. They're attached to them. So you can't subtract. You just have to leave your answer like that. All right. Let's uh, look at some quotient property, which says you can divide these. It's just like multiplying, but it, it, uh, you can divide the top and, and bottom of a fraction. Remember what they're called? Numerator, denominator. Okay, so for number seven, uh, these are perfect squares. They're going to work out nice and even for us. So with the square root of 16 over the square root of 49, that's the square root of 16 by itself over the square root of 49 by itself, which equals 4 over 7. And that's all there is to that one. You're all done. How about 8? What do we get? Square root of 121 over the square root of 25, and this will equal 11 fifths. And we're all done. All right, rationalizing the denominator. You know, that sounds like a good name for myself. I'm going to get myself a, a t-shirt that says the denominator. Divide and conquer. Okay, so what we want to do is get any radicals out of the denominator because we don't like to have them down there. Look, these are irrational. That means they keep going on and on and on. Maybe some of you guys out there have a girlfriend like that. I mean, they just keep going. They never stop. You don't know what's going to come next. That's an irrational number. We can't divide by that. We can divide into that, but not by that. So in math, we don't like radicals in the bottom of a fraction. So what are we going to do? We're going to get rid of them. And how do we do it? We have a little trick. Here's a little trick up our sleeve. Whatever the square root is in the bottom, multiply by that over itself. And this is really equivalent to 1, right? Anything over itself is 1. So we're not changing the value of the fraction. What we're doing is just rewriting it a different way. And so 3 times radical 11, that's going to equal 3 radical 11 all over. What's the square root of 11 times the square root of 11? The number that you multiply times itself to get 11 times the number that you multiply by itself to get 11. Well, you multiply it by itself. So guess what you get? 11. So you're all done with that one. You can check to see, did the 3 and 11 cancel? No, they don't. If they did, you'd have to do that. You cancel them out, take some factors out, and reduce it. But uh, this is as far as it goes. So 3 radical 11 over 11 is equivalent to 3 divided by radical 11. They're the same value if you put them in the calculator. But we would rather work in math with the second one than the first one. Okay, let's try number 10. You're going to hate me for number 10, but you'll see why in a second. So if you get a radical 4 in the bottom, multiply by radical 4 over radical 4. And this equals what? 1 times radical 4 is just radical 4 over radical 4 times radical 4. That's radical 16, which is 4. All right, what is the square root of 4? 2. So 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half. And the reason I said you are going to hate me for this one, look, 1 half. We'll look at the beginning of this problem. What's the square root of 4? That equals 2. So this all equals 1 half. 
So you're like, Mr. Kelly, why don't we just do that to begin with? Well, I wanted to show you an example where if we go through this process, you actually get the same answer. And so that's why I gave you number 10 there. Of course, if you can reduce this thing, do that. That is much simpler than going through the whole process. Okay, so the next thing we have, uh, we're going to use our quotient property for radicals here. We're going to divide these up. We have the square root of 8 fifths. So this is going to equal the square root of 8 over the square root of 5. Now, if you want, you can, like, square root of 8 simplifies, but we'll deal with that later. What we're going to do is rewrite this by multiplying by radical 5 over radical 5. Remember, whatever's in the denominator, that's what you multiply by over itself. And what's this going to do for us? We're going to get the square root of 40 over the square root of 25, which equals 5. All right, square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. And now we can simplify the square root of 40. So if you remember the number line, remember 2, oh, what do we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we get 1, 4, 9, 16. We've got to keep it going, 25, 36. We're trying to simplify 40. So you're checking these numbers off. The first one that goes into it is 4. So this is going to equal the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. Remember, that was the last mastery check. What's the square root of 4? 2. So you get 2 radical 10 over 5. That's going to be our final answer. Um, the 10 and 5 you can't cancel because the 10 is under a radical and the 5 is not. The 2 and 5, they don't cancel. But if they did, you could. So I'll show you one like that in a minute. All right, let's look at number 12. We have the square root of 12 over the square root of 6. If you want to simplify 12 now, you can, but I'm going to wait. Um, remember, we can't have a radical in the bottom, so we're going to do radical 6 over radical 6 and multiply across. So that's going to give us square root of 72 over square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 36, which is just 6, right? So now the square root of 72, how does that simplify? Use the number line. What are we going to get? Square root of 36 and 2. Did you guys think 9 and 8? That's not what I taught you. So this is going to be square root of 6, rad or 6 radical 2 over 6. Guess what? Those 6s, they cancel. And so final answer here after these guys cancel out. Radical 2, done. So this mess, when you're all done, equals radical 2. But you're like, Mr. Kelly, I saw another shortcut. What's 12 divided by 6? 2. Okay, so again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like, emphasize. If you can simpl simplify things to begin with, it could make your life a lot simpler. Uh, if you don't, you'll still get the same answer. There are several different ways to do these problems. Time for some more music. Back. Uh, hey, we already did those. What am I doing? Bring the pain. Bring the pain. All right, so 13. Ooh, don't know what I was doing there. Let's simplify all these first. So 3, radical 7, minus 2. How does radical 28 simplify? Use the number line. You get a 4 and a 7. How does 63 simplify? Use the number line. You get a 9. negative 4, or you can write minus 4. And so we're almost done. Remember, we can only add from the beginning of this video, which probably seems like 10 years ago from now, you can only add square roots if they're the same, and we have square roots of 7. And so it's, you know, you just add the coefficients. 3 minus 4, combine the like terms. 3 minus 4 is negative 1 plus 3. That is positive 2. So 2 radical 7, and we're all done with that one. All right, number 14. Whew. This is like a marathon. It's like watching Sully's videos. All right, 14. Uh, look, we have a binomial. How many times we got to do this? If you see a little squared on a binomial, you just can't like, dis some students call it distribute. You just can't distribute that to both or whatever you're thinking. You have to write it out and we have to double distribute. Remember that? Sully taught you that. So you write 3 radical 3 minus 2 radical 2 
write it twice. That's what squared means, times itself. And now you have to do a double distribute. So I'm going to do the 3 radical 3 and multiply it by the 3 radical 3. And then I'm going to do the 3 radical 3 times the negative 2 radical 2. And I'll do that part. When I'm done with that, then I'll deal with the negative 2 radical 2 from the first binomial here. So let's get started. 3 times 3 is 9. All right. Radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9. That's from the first swoop here. The second swoop. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Radical 3 times radical 2 is radical 6. Now I have to do, I've done both of the top swoops. i got to do the bottom swoop. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Square root of 2 times square root of 3, square root of 6. I'm running out of room here. Now I have to do the last two. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So watch your uh, signs with that. And radical 2 times radical 2 is radical 4. All right, so let's simplify some of these. This is 9 times 3, minus 6 radical 6, minus another 6 radical 6, plus 4 times 2, right? So I just simplified the, the square roots here is all I did. Now we get 9 times 3 is 27, negative 6 radical 6, and another negative 6 radical 6. Remember, the radicals are the same, so you can combine those. So you get minus 12 radical 6. And plus 4 times 2, which is 8. So we have a plus 8. Whew, almost done. 27 plus 8 is 35. So we get 35 minus 12 radical 6. All done with that one. Hey, you know what? I have two for you. To, let's watch listen a little more music. Okay, that was enough, and uh, we have right now two more for you to try. Try them on your own and see if you get what I get. Go. All right, we are back, and I just have the solutions here. I hope you took the time to work through it. Look, uh, square root of 12 is 2 radical 3. Square root of 27 is 3 radical 3. Use the number line, and you get 2 radical 5 plus 2 radical 3 minus 3 radical 3. The 2 minus 3 is negative 1, so you can put a 1 there if you want to. Or you can just leave it as 2 radical 5 minus radical 3. 16, you have to do double, dis double distributive property. Wow. And uh, so what do we get here? I, I wrote it out in red. And then the top, like the 4 radical 5 times the 4 radical 5 is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. Radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. 4 times 3 is uh, 12 here. So we have a minus 12 radical 10. Uh, on the inside, I went back to red here. So we get a negative 12 radical 10. The last two... Be careful, it's negative 3 times negative 3, that's positive 9. Radical 2 times radical 2 is 2. And then uh, simplifying, we turn to the black here, so 16 times 5 is 80. The minus 12 and minus 12 give you 20, minus 24 radical 10. 9 times 2 is 18. So then you have 80 plus 18 is 98 and minus a 24 radical 10. All right, and that's it. If you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide square roots, as well as rationalize that denominator, you will be good to go. And that is the whole unit 11. And guess what? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of here. This is the last lesson Mr. Kelly's going to teach. Remember, my motto, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Soon!